I grew up in a single parent home. Lots of people do. Mom passed when I was 10 years old. Uh, she had a brain tumor, lost le use of her right arm, left leg, was in a wheelchair and in and out of hospitals. Gratitude was often tough to come by in our house. Dad was an independent business person. He was a freelancer. That meant long days at work and sometimes longer days in the home office. He busted his butt to put food on the table, but the funny thing was, he wasn't necessarily the one putting the food on the table. My brother and sister and I were latchkey kids. We'd come home, there'd be a note with our tasks, our chores, the things that needed to be got done before dad got home for dinner. My older brother was always in charge of some kind of meat. My younger, my younger sister, canned vegetables, frozen vegetables. Me, I was the carbs. <laughs> I'm still the carbs. It's kind of become my life's work. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't just any carbs. It was something very specific, more times than I can remember. Instant mashed potatoes. Not sure if you've ever had the pleasure. Dehydrated potatoes that look like they've been put through a pencil sharpener. Water, milk, butter, salt. Not the best thing on the menu necessarily. But I'll tell you this, I loved them. And I loved that it was my job. I took such pride in it. I loved when I got to the point that I didn't even have to measure anymore. I could eyeball that thing. When we went to family therapy as a family to try and heal going through that time, I remember the very first session, therapist had us go through, introduce ourselves, say our name, and what our job was in the household. I said, I'm Ian. I'm the mashed potatoes. <laughs> I relished the job. And my brother and sister and I, yeah, sure, we fought like siblings do in the kitchen. But when dad came home and we sat down at that table, well, we may not have been a family that said grace all the time, but we damn well gave thanks. Thanks for the father that was getting us through. Thanks for the food on the table. Thanks for each other. And we gave that thanks in spite of the empty chair at the end of that table. And that sense of gratitude, it fueled the engine for us. We got it. We gave it. We wanted more. It fed our lives. It fed our souls. It fed our healing. It was the fuel for the engine of our healing. That's why even to this day in my life, I don't say I'm grateful. I have great fuel. It's the thing that drives you forward. That great fuel can change and alter your life in so many ways. My siblings and I still fight, but it's no wonder that cooking has become a passion for all of us, because the thing we most fight about is who's bringing what to the family functions. But as with an email that I received this week, more often than not, it's, hey, Ian, you want to bring mashed potatoes? <laughs> Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> Except the game has changed. It's russet potatoes, skins on, cooked in milk, roasted garlic, white cheddar, chives, salt, pepper. Ah, good stuff. But I have to say, when I reflect on that time, what I think about is my dad and how he must have felt. Do you remember being a kid and you come home from school, kindergarten, first grade, maybe it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthday, Christmas, something. You don't have money to buy a gift. So what do you do? You make something for them. Maybe in class, but you come home and you say, I made this for you. And I know as someone who now has grown kids, I miss those days when my kids would come home and say, Dad, I made this for you. Ooh, right in the feels. All of their love, all of their joy, everything for you put right into that. But what that makes me realize and think about is, why don't we, every single day, do things that allow us to look ourselves in the mirror and say, I made this for you. Because we don't. We're not grateful for ourselves sometimes. We don't create that great fuel. It's one of the reasons that I cook. I love to cook and I'm passionate about it, but I live alone. Sure, I love having people around my table. You are all welcome. I love having people sit around my table, but more often than not, I'm cooking for just me. And I'll post that on Instagram, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> but oftentimes when I do, I'll get a text from somebody, friend of mine that may say, hey, who's over? 
I say, nobody. Well, why did you plate it like that with all the garnish and the lovely stuff? And I say, because I'm worth it. And what I want you to know is, so are you. Find the thing that's going to give you that great fuel. Find the thing that's going to feed your life and fuel that engine. Oh, and one last thing. I made this for you. Thank you.